This is the Protolabs website, also known as Protomold. If you do a search for either, they will come up. Uh, this is the UK site. I think they also have uh, operations in America and possibly elsewhere in the world. Uh, and they've been going about 20 years. I have no affiliation with these guys. I've never used their services. I have met them at a couple of exhibitions. They're based over in Telford, uh, Hellsfield 8. This is kind of Plastics Valley in the UK. So there's an awful lot of moulders and tool makers located in that area. And they specialise in uh, rather rapid short turnaround services, including 3D printing and CNC machining. But uh, from our point of view, we're going to have a look at the injection moulding side of things. And I've been having a quick look through this website, and it is actually quite comprehensive. They've got an awful lot of information here. Uh, material comparison guide. This is all the different materials, presumably, that they work with and that you might want to use. Uh, let's just have a look at the plastic selection. tells you tensile strengths, uh, different attributes, what they're suitable for. I dare say that uh, you could probably arrange to ship them a specific material if it was necessary, but this is a fairly comprehensive list of all the common plastics you might encounter. Uh, they've got quite an extensive section on design tips. If I go back, these are all the different aspects of designing an injection mould tool. Parting lines, shut-offs, surface finishing, cosmetic defects, what else have we got here, A and B sides, gating, insert moulding, putting little threaded inserts in. So they can do quite a lot and by the looks of it there's an awful lot of information on this site. Uh, design aids, there's actually a book here, Injection Moulding for Dummies, I don't know if this is actually the book you're getting, I suspect it's really just a a PDF of the website, it does say 65 page dummies book in inverted commas, so uh, it's probably their own homebrew version. I might download a copy of this and have a look through to see exactly what it includes. But what I was going to have a look at in this video is the design cube that they hand out at exhibitions, and also you can uh, register your interests and get one sent to you for free. It does say only in Europe, but there might well be a way of getting these in the US. Uh, and this is basically what it is. It's just a little cross shape cube which uh, all folds together. But I'll show you that in more detail in a minute. Uh, they've also got this instant online quoting service, which is a little bit expensive, I guess. Uh, you probably get similar prices if you went to a small tool maker injection molding firm. But it's kind of nice to be able to just come on and say what you want to do. It's only a single cavity selection here, but they've got a range of different finishes. You can have a high polish finish uh, on the A or B side. Adds significantly to the price though, because I know people who have polished moulds and most of it is uh, just time, effort and a lot of hard work. Samples up to 500, although down here you can obviously ask for slightly more. Uh, material, cheap polypropylene, uh, various TPEs, uh, some polyurethanes, nylons, don't seem to have a plain nylon 6.6, they've got a plain nylon 6, they don't actually tell you the material uh, that they're using, so you can look at the data sheet for these to get further details if you want, so look at the nylon 6, 3000, adds a little bit to the price, but you're looking at about £2 per part, which if you're a small company or just starting out with a new product you want to get developed, I guess £2 a part isn't horrendously expensive. Most of the cost is obviously the tooling and you're looking at 3000 ish uh, So it's not outrageously expensive and they do have a turnaround 15 business days for a sample. You can get it done a lot quicker than that but it does put the price up quite significantly, an extra 50% on your tooling costs. So I think it's well worth having a look around this website in a little bit more detail. No, that just takes me to that page, and for some reason the image doesn't come up. Uh, but yeah, pretty comprehensive stuff. Surface finishing, let's have a look at that. So these are all the surface finish codes. Non cosmetic, this will just be a machine finish. Uh, low, low cosmetic polish, gritting, bead blasting. And uh, looks like they do another test plaque here, which I haven't actually got one of. 
I'll have to see if I can get hold of one of those, but this is all the different finishes that they do. Uh, yeah. If you're looking for a cheap injection moulding solution, I guess these guys are probably worth getting in touch with, or at least going online and having a look at the quote. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at their proto cube uh, and see in the flesh what this thing actually looks like. Right, and this is one of the proto mould cubes. The fact that it's proto mould without a U just kind of suggests that they do have some American ancestry. And this is basically just a demo piece to show you the sorts of do's and don'ts uh, that you need to watch out for when you're designing an injection molded part. Uh, different surface finishes, different thicknesses and so on. Uh, and this thing just clicks together. There we go. And that's going to be the fixed half because there's a gate vestige right at the middle. And this is obviously going to be the moving half from which most of the geometry is in, which makes sense because you want it to stick in this side. Uh, I can already see some little dots, which are going to be the ejector pins. There's one there in that corner. There's one more up at this corner. And these things are going to be all over the place. There's some here, look. Uh, so this is obviously the fixed half, and the pins push it out after it's moulded. And a single gate on this side. And it's fairly large. I mean, this is getting on for A4 size. So they can obviously do fairly uh, large-scale molded parts if necessary. Everything is working on a living hinge which tells us this is polypropylene. Uh, there's no resin codes on here anywhere but uh, generally speaking if you've got something with plastic hinges it's going to be polypropylene. You can do it with other materials but PP is cheap, easy to work with uh, and recyclable if necessary. There's a copyright date here of 2006 so they have been churning these things out for quite a long while. I don't know if it's the same mould that they're still using. I have picked up a few of these over the years from exhibitions uh, and obviously if you're in Europe at least you can order one from their website uh, and I suspect you can probably get them in the US as well. So let's have a quick look at some of the details here. If I can get these, you have to keep turning this around because everything is slightly different, differently oriented and I might need to zoom in on this but these are different surface finishes. This one here uh, I can see machine tool marks on there so that's obviously a machine finish. Uh, and these are more textured finishes and over here we have some more textured finishes and I think these codes are on the website so you would need to cross reference those to see exactly uh, which is which. We've also got some do's and don'ts here in terms of wall thicknesses. Uh, basically if you're designing any plastic part you try and keep the thickness of everything pretty much consistent so this 100% presumably is the same thickness as the actual main uh, cross, the main body of this and then we've got 125, 75 and 50 generally the thinner you go and certainly the deeper you go because these are quite deep wings uh, it gets more and more difficult and you can probably see there's a little bit of a draft angle on the sides of these to help get it out of the mould and then there's some more of them on the other side which again are going to have slight draft angles on them but generally speaking you want to try and avoid very very thin deep walls and tend to keep everything the same thickness as possible. I've also got these two bosses and I don't know if I can quite catch that in the light but this one is sunk down on top uh, and that's got too thick next to it whereas this one is nice and flat and so he's cored out and if we have a look on the back we can see what they're talking about here. Basically this one, which has sunk slightly, just about catch that in the light. That's because you've got a big blob of plastic there. And most plastics shrink slightly after moulding. Uh, polypropylene may be about 1%. That's enough just to give you these little surface defects. You can cure that by either coring it out to keep the wall thickness consistent all the way around that. Or just use a material which doesn't shrink so much. This is why a lot of... Uh, plastic cases tend to be made out of ABS because that's uh, a much more resilient material which doesn't shrink. Uh, you can also see some slight sink marks along the top here and if I run my finger over that I can definitely feel some little bumps going on. And again on the front they're just showing what's happening. Basically this one is quite thin which is going to make it hard to push the plastic across. This one here, 50% of the thickness, going to be a little bit easier to mould that. And this one here, they've just put a little fillet around the edge 
just chamfered the edges a little bit so that uh, uh, it relieves the, the stresses around there. I don't think that's absolutely necessary, but uh, anyhow, that's what they're alluding to. We've obviously got a hole here, which means there's a core which mates on the both sides of the mould to, to basically seal that off. There's probably going to be a weld line around here because obviously the gate's in the middle so as it flows up it's going to flow either side of that little core that's making that hole and there'll be a weld line on this end. But I can't see anything in particular there. Maybe just if I were to zoom in you might be able to see a very thin weld line there. Uh, there is a weld line on here that they were drawing attention to. I can find it. Certainly there's going to be some around here because again we've got through holes and as the plastic flows it has to go either way around there uh, and these are things that you need to be fairly careful of because you can get cosmetic defects or even uh, weak parts where the plastic flows both way around something and then has to recombine at the other edge. There's definitely a bit of an art to getting rid of those. Here we go, that's the bit I was looking for, knit lines as they're referring to them and all of these the plastic has had to flow around and that I think I can see just at the top of that one there's a little bit of a line there a mark which is probably where the plastic has come up this way and flowed around it and there seems to be a little bit of sinking there nope that's an ejector pin there is an ejector pin mark just there uh, something else about making things too thick generally that's a lot thicker than the wall section so you don't normally want to do that this ridge around the edge is also quite thin so that's going to be tricky and you might get a bit of distortion there as it shrinks because if everything shrinks 1%, 1% of a thicker section is physically more than 1% of a thinner section. So this section would probably come in slightly more than these walls. And I don't know if that's... Yeah, it is slightly visible where perhaps this wall in particular, you can perhaps see how it's pulling in along this edge. And I think you can just about see as well that it's pulling in here and here as well. And that's simply because this plastic is shrinking uh, and dragging these walls in a little bit. Uh, this is all a guide to doing bosses. If you need to put screws into the corner of your parts or somewhere in the middle of, middle of uh, the moulding, you've got these little, little uh, webs around the edges, little buttress walls. And here and again, they're trying to keep the wall thickness consistent. What you don't want to do is put a big chunky blob like that in the corner or like that in the middle because that's going to give you differential shrinking which causes issues uh, and the other intriguing feature on this is this row along here where they've cored it out from this side by having pegs basically teeth which have made these uh, cavities on this side and they've done the same on this side and they've been very careful in the way that they've overlapped these so these teeth as they come in they actually mate on the side walls and that means that when you put this thing together you can actually see all the way through that hole there we go right the way down the hole so that's a way of getting uh, a through hole through your part because normally that would require a, a core pull you would need to have a rod going through there which pulled out and that's going to be tricky because you've got these holes either side so um that, that wouldn't be an easy thing to make, but they've worked around it by doing it half and half. So half of it is missing on this side, and the other half is missing on this side. So it's quite a creative way of creating a through hole through the whole moulding. So anyway, that's a proto-mould cube, and uh, quite an interesting tactile little thing. I think they probably have space on here to have put a few more features. Uh, obviously these little wings have... Uh, been sunk down but they're not maybe just a little bit below the surface but they're not particularly complicated to implement and these obviously are, are pretty straightforward but there's a little tiny pip on the edge of these just so it all clips into place so uh, there we go if you can get hold of one of those to inspect at your leisure I recommend doing so